Hello everybody! This is Cruz and Theme and welcome to my YouTube channel. It has been a while since I've uploaded last. I believe it's been probably over half a year or so. And I realize I've been neglecting my YouTube channel. Um, I have been streaming more or less because I actually did not have the time to do a proper YouTube video that I would be satisfied with. But it is my <laughs> sort of soft New Year's revol uh, revolution? <laughs> Revolution. It's my New Year's revolution that I am going to be focusing on my YouTube channel a bit more. And something that I always wanted to do, or something that I wanted to do ever since creating my first ever YouTube playthrough of Might Magic 6, is to make a quote-unquote better version of it, because I feel like it's technically lacking at least the first few episodes, like the sound is not really actually there. And what better way to, you know, make my YouTube comeback then with another Might & Magic 6 tutorial playthrough 100% playthrough using, you know, I, I guess the same party, I would say because I feel like that's the most balanced one but sort of like teaching everybody the ropes in case they're interested so without too much ado, let's just go like, the, fir the first few episodes are going to be focused more around, you know party creation, what the different classes do, what stats do for you. And I'm not going to delve into too much details, right? I, this is not, you know, a, a, you know, you have to have this so you can have that, etc. sort of, uh, sort of playthrough. This is once again going to be a simple playthrough to ease in a casual player that's interested in playing Mind Magic 6. So let's go. First things first, death during the night of let's do stars. create party and not quick start, so let's click down here. Order. Yes, Falagar, very nice, but we won't be focusing on the story. Um, because I feel like if you want to know what the story is, it's much better for you to play the game yourself. Of course, the story of Might and Magic 6 is, is fairly convoluted in and of itself, and, and you know, it has ties to... Heroes of Mind Magic 2 and then Heroes of Mind Magic 3 and, you know, all the surrounding lore of Mind Magic. But really, if you want to know the lore, play the game yourself. I'm not going to be focusing too much on, you know, what the story is, etc. I'm going to be throwing bits and bobs there just to let people know what I'm doing, but that is pretty much going to be it. So, welcome people to the character creation screen. As you can see, we have four characters and we control all of them at once in Mind Magic 6. Uh, each character has their own class, for example, Roderick here is the Paladin. Each character has their own stats and their skills. And this is sort of the starting skills that you can get for your characters to set, uh, to set, on, off, uh, to set off on your adventure. And let's take a look at the classes first things first. So, first we have the Knight. The Knight is the primary physical based class in the game. The advantage of the knight is that they have a very high amount of hit points, the highest in the game in fact. However, they cannot use any magic and they do not have any mana or spell points. I will use the the expression mana and spell points like interchangeably. Get the, it, like it feels more natural for me to call it mana, not spell points, but in the game it's actually called spell points. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, what is the knight good for? Well, like I said, they have a very high health pool and they have access to all armor and weapon skills and all miscellaneous skills, but all classes have access to all miscellaneous skills except for the knight who doesn't have access to meditation because, you know, no spell points and everything. What does that mean? That means you will be able to use any kind of weapon swords, daggers, maces, spears, axes or and bows and use all the different, uh, all the different, you know, defense uh, items, which is basically armor, so leather armor, chain armor, and plate armor, and also shields. Um, the knights are very good in dealing physical damage, and they are also very good because the physical, uh, the physical skills do not take as many skill points to develop as magic skills do. So the knight is actually a very good party member to have for two reasons. One, they have a high amount of health goals. So if you're ever in a bind, the knight is probably the one that's going to survive. The other thing is, you can just safely dump all of the miscellaneous skills onto your knight. Disarm, prep, repair item, identify, perception, um, merchant even, like everything can go on your knight. Because they will have the skill points to use uh, to, to develop them. 
that's what the knight does. So we're going to be going on to the next quote-unquote pure class, which is the cleric. The cleric is a healer, more or less. Um, they are. They can use maces, they can use armors up the chain, they can use shields, but where they shine in is they can use self-magics. Now, the self-magics are body, spirit, and mind, and they have to deal with sort of buffing your characters, healing them, uh, curing them of debuffs, um, what else? Um, there are some nifty little tricks you can do, for example, telekinesis is their mind magic that lets you manipulate objects at a distance. Um, but that is more or less what clerics are able to do. Being a pure, ca uh, pure spellcaster, however, they share a certain trait with the sorcerer, which is the, they are the only two classes that have, uh, that have access to the two most powerful uh, magic skills in the game, those being light and dark magic. But we cannot start with them, but they, they will come into play, I would go, I would, I'm going to say, fairly soon in my playthrough. So, I already uh, sort of uh, announced them, but the last quote-unquote pure class is the Sorcerer. Now, these are, I would say, similar to the Cleric in that they are, they are magic-oriented. But as opposed to the cleric that can actually wield, you know, maces and chain armor, these guys can pretty much only wield staves and daggers and they only have access to leather armor. They cannot use shields. They do have access to all of the elemental magics, which is fire, air, water and earth and, as I mentioned before, dark and light. Um, now, what are elemental magics good for? Well, mostly damage. Why would you be surprised? But they do have they do have a couple of very important uh, spells that I would like to call quality of life. They aren't necessary for the game, um, but they make it a whole lot easier in the quality of life sense, right? Um, and those are, for example, town portal, which lets you travel, you know, to certain towns in an instant. And the ubiquitous, you know, or not ubiquitous, but the always useful fly spell, etc., etc. So that's what sorcerers do. Okay, so now we finished the three pure classes. Let's go with the hybrid classes. The paladin is a hybrid between the, the knight and the cleric. They can use plate armor, which is sort of like, you know, the knight thing. Um, they have access to, I believe, all the weapon types. Yes, they all the weapon types. And they can also use self-magics, but they cannot use light and dark magic. So they are able to use spirit, mind, and body magics. They, they are able to sort of be like your backup healer, backup buffer. You can even sort of develop them into a primary buffer using just spirit magic, which they start with, and then have a cleric, for example, you have one in your party, be the primary healer with body magic and then develop into, uh, and then develop the cleric later on into light and dark, but we're, we're rushing ahead of ourselves. Now, the paladin is not as strong as the knight is. It doesn't, ha it doesn't, like, they don't have as many hit points and they don't have as much mana as the clerics do. So they are, they are, really, as I say, backup casters, right? But like I say, having a mix between the two can actually be a very good buff. However, you need to realize then that you will be spending a lot of points on different things. Now, the next class, uh, the next hybrid class is the Archer. And the Archer is a hybrid between the Knight and the Sorcerer. Now, that is a... Uh, I would consider the Archers to be like a very, very good balanced class in and of itself, right? Because they have access to all the weapon skills, they can use armors up to chain, and they can use elemental magic types. And why I prefer elemental magic types over self magic types when discussing, you know, just a single class is because I find the direct damage that elemental magics add to your, you know, variety of arsenal is much better than the ones that, that the uh, self-schools do give you. So what archers have access to is the elemental magics, so fire, air, water, and earth, but once again, same as with the paladin, they do have a lower, you know, like, spell point pool than the sorcerer does, so they will be, like, at best they will be a backup caster, especially in the early game when you can pretty much only cast, like, two spells. Okay, 
And the last hybrid class is the Druid. Now the Druid is a hybrid class between the Cleric and the Sorcerer. It is a very frail class. I do believe next to the Sorcerer it has like the least amount of hit points. But it, they have a massive amount of mana. What do they use it for? Well, casting casting all of the spells from both the self magic school and the and the elemental school. So they are they are a very uh, they are a very very uh, how should I say um, adaptable sort of a class. Like they can pretty much do anything magic wise. And let's be honest, magic and might magic six is actually much stronger than you know the might part is. Spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, so they can do, they can do spirit, mind, body magic, so meaning they can heal you, they can buff you, they can cure debuffs, um, they can raise the dead, for example, so like the Clara can with spirit magic, and they can also use all the lovely things from the elemental schools, like the direct damage spells, they can use fly, they can use town portal, yada yada yada. So, those are the classes. Now very quickly, what did the stats do? So, might. The higher, the higher might that you have, the more damage you deal in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Intellect, the more intellect you have, the more spell points a druid, an archer, and a sorcerer have. Personality influences the spell points of druids, clerics, and paladins. Endurance basically means how many hit points you have. Now, endurance is a bit, is a bit different because endurance um, gives not only more hit points, but it also has an impact on how quickly your character goes into the dead state. Basically, if your hit points if your hit points fall to zero in Mind Magic 6 with a given character, your character isn't dead, they're unconscious. However, if their hit points, because they can go into negative, fall below their endurance, they are then dead. Accuracy basically influences your chance to hit with both melee attacks and ranged attacks, those being bow attacks, not magic attacks. Speed influences how quickly you, you move, so recovery time, and also influences the amount of armor class you have. And luck has uh, like an effect onto, I would say, most things in the game. Um, however, it's not a very severe impact. Like what luck does is it allows a character to dodge as much damage from a sprung trap. It allows characters to more often than not, or as like more often to to uh, resist uh, debuff uh, debuff attempts from monsters and stuff like that. But in general, luck I would find is a very very hard stat to sort of not quantify, but you know describe what it actually does. Um, one thing I do want to point out, um, here you can see my mouse cursor and this is how we're going to be playing the game. If you right click onto any cla uh, into uh, onto any sort of text, like right click and hold, you will see a description basically of what I uh, basically of what I was saying. And same goes with the stats, so you're never really going to be, you know, lost. Okay, so let's go to skills. Now, skills, each class starts with two skills. And these are fixed, you cannot change them. However, in the quick party, uh, or not in the, the uh, create party menu, you can add up to two skills from this pool into each, onto, your, onto each of your characters. And every class has a different pool. So, what do the staffs do? Uh, what do the skills do? Not the staffs. I was reading staff here and I said staffs instead of skills. Basically, skills allow you, like weapon skills, allow you to use a given weapon. So without the staff skill, Roderick, our druid, well, currently our druid, would not be able to wield staffs. The only thing they you can wield by default are clubs, which are awful. And also, earth magic allows you to use earth magic spells, both to learn them and to use them. Um, same goes with every other, uh, same goes with every other skill. And if you're ever, you know, like in a bind of what a skill does, for example, what the hell does repair item do? You can basically right click. A repair item does what, basically what it says on the tin, um, it allows you to repair items, which is, you know, <laughs> who would have, th who would have thought, right? Okay. What are we going to go for with our class? Well, 
I'm actually going to stick with the original party of the game. However, I'm going to be changing around our stats and I'm also going to be changing around our starting skills. Um, one thing that I would like to uh, also just quickly mention before we start. As you can see, if I examine my sword skill, we have three things underneath. We have the normal skill level, the expert skill level, and the master skill level. Every skill has both rank and level of skill. Level is like level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. all the way to 60 plus, basically, but we're never getting there, honestly, trust me. And then you have rank, which is normal, expert, and master. Getting a better rank unlocks the, uh, the, the, uh, well, basically the, the effect that is stated, right? So if I pump skills or, uh, or skill points into my sword skill with Roderick here, each point that I increase will give me that much of an attack bonus. On expert level, additionally, it reduces my recovery time. And on master level, additionally, it allows me to use swords in my left hand, which normally you can't. Uh, and every skill has three levels, normal, expert, and master in Mind Magic 6. And every single character, if they can learn a certain skill, they can also master it. There are no restrictions. There are only restrictions to which skill you can learn, not if you can master it. Okay, um, that's going to be it. This is going to be our starting party. Now, what I'm going to do is I want my party to have the highest amount of damage possible for a physical class and also the highest amount of spell points available to a magic class. That's how I like to start my game. Um, some opinions may... I mean, some people might have different opinions on how, what the optimal start is, but that's just how I like to do things. So first things first, I'm going to... I'm going to drop down luck with everybody by two points, which is the maximum that you can drop, you know, a stat by. And I'm going to also decrease intellect for Roderick because he's a paladin and he has no use for intellect for his spell points. Uh, similar thing with Alexis with going for personality and of course Cleric and Sorcerer or Serena and Zoltan the same. So I'm going to dump all of my stats into Might for my Paladin and my Archer. And I'm going to dump all of my points into Personality and Intellect for my Cleric and my Sorcerer. Uh, paladin or an Archer. Uh, did I say Paladin and Sorcerer? I'm confused. Never mind. Okay. So one thing I'm just going to mention on this occasion is that the base level without a single... Like, the, the stat level that you don't get either a penalty on or a bonus on is level 11. So I kind of want to get these guys to, you know, like level 11 at least so they don't get any penalty. I'm just going to put a point into speed for Roderick. And that's going to be it. This is going to be our stat distribution for the beginner for the beginning. And the reason why I chose like so is because in the in the beginning, Roderick and Alexis will be probably the most consistent damage dealers, whereas Serena and Zoltan just won't have the spell points to consistently deal out magical damage, uh, or you know heals. Um, that's it for stats with this party setup. Let's go for... So we have Sword and Spirit Magic for Roderick. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this a bit differently than I than what I did with, uh, with my first playthrough. And I'm going to give him a spear, which I believe is the same that I did in my first playthrough, but, you know, go me. Uh, and I am also going to give him Disarm to start with. With Alexis, I'm going to give her an axe, but I'm going to teach her how to use shields later on. Because why not? We can. And for now, actually, should we go for dagger with her? No, I'm going to I'm going to do it like I said I am. I'm going to give her perception because we will need perception. That is the only skill with which you cannot actually finish the game as far as I know for some bizarre reason. Um, but yeah, that's not really much of a spoiler. It's just, you know, 
it, I'm just saying this because, you know, if you get stuck on that particular part, it's really, really disheartening to know that you should have, you know, had something with you that basically you didn't know uh, was a thing. Um, Serena is going to have a shield because she cannot use anything in her offhand and she starts with body magic. And Roderick is going to start out with spirit magic. So she doesn't really need spirit magic to start with. We could have her give her mind magic. We could also give her meditation. But of the two, I'm probably going to go with mind magic for now. And Zoltan, you already start with daggers and you're just going to be using daggers for the rest of your life because you can't really use anything else that's worth a damn. I'm going to give you leather because that's all you can use. And since Alexis already has earth magic, our archer, and Zoltan already has fire magic. We just need water magic to sort of have, uh, you know, like the beginning, uh, the beginning skills. Um, these are the most important ones, I would say. Now I could we easily switch out the Sarn Trap for something else. I could easily switch out Perception for something else because some of them we're not really going to be using, um, at least not in the beginning. But yeah, I would consider this to be a good start because you can add, you know, skills later on while we're going through the game. And when you're satisfied with your party, you just click this OK button here. And yeah, let's go into the game. <laughs> 